Hello, and thanks again for joining me as part of this GraphQL language features tutorial. In part four of this tutorial, we're going to be looking at working with pagination on GraphQL. In the previous part of this tutorial, we looked at working with fragments as a way to recycle fields. I have totally removed what I was working with in the last section of this tutorial, and I've written a new query aptly named, using operation names, three products. And all this very simply does is retrieve the first three products in the store. And so what I'm going to do here is I'll just hit play and verify that this works. And lo and behold, I'm getting uh, these three apparel items in my test store. You might be wondering, well, if I get the first three, how do I get anything beyond the first three? How do I start working with pages uh, on GraphQL? Remember that, uh, just as a recap here, if you watched Getting Started with GraphQL, when you request anything that's pluralized, Shopify's API is implementing a connection specification. Essentially, when you get anything plural, the type that you get back is a list of edges that is called a connection. So let's look at that product connection. So I get the list of edges, and that's why I had to do this edges node thing down here, and then at the end of node is where I can actually get the title and description. There is another property here on the connections called page info, and it returns a page info type that is non nullable. So right at the same level as edges, if you like, uh, I'm going to get that field as well. And let's actually inspect that type to see what it, it tells me about. It's two Booleans. One is called has next page and has previous page. So let's try those out. And I'm going to hit play again. So what this is saying is that has next page is true. So there is another page of results. And that means that there's at least one product that hasn't been captured in this particular page of results. And because this is the first page, there's not a page before this one. So uh, has previous page is false. So how do I actually get at that next page of results? What do I look to? The way that Shopify has implemented GraphQL is relying on the connections specification that's part of the relay library. And many other GraphQL schemas have chosen to adopt cursor-based pagination over offset-based pagination. There are very good performance reasons behind the scenes for doing this, and I can link to some documentation in the outro of this tutorial. But for now, know that the way that cursor-based pagination works is that each edge essentially has an index to say this is a unique identifier of this particular edge. Not a unique identifier of the node, but the actual edge itself, because connections return a list of edges. Let's jump to the schema definition of a product edge to explore this a little further. In addition to the node that I get back on that edge, the other important property here is this string. So I'm actually going to say, tell me about the cursor as well. So I'm going to do that. Now I get a lot more data back here in this array of edges. Each edge has this opaque, unique identifier of the cursor. The cursor is kind of like the position of that edge in the list. So let's say I needed to get to the next three pages of results. What I would do here is I'm going to look at this products query, and I'm going to take a look at the actual field itself to see what arguments I can supply. So I'm going to click on uh, the actual field products here, not the type that gets returned, but products. And these are a list of the arguments that I can do. Now, I'm only using first here. That's kind of the most basic one. But this kind of goes hand in hand with another argument that I can use here. So what I'm going to say is the last cursor that I retrieved is this string. So what I'm going to do just for simplicity's sake is I'm going to copy that string and I'm going to supply a second argument to say after uh, I need a colon here after this particular cursor. Now let's just take a look at the products here as a sanity check. So the first three that I got back were titled ocean blue shirt, classic varsity top, and the last one I got back is yellow wool jumper. If I am issuing a request for the next page of results, I should expect that none of these show up. All my products are titled uniquely. So I'm going to say give me the first three products after this last cursor. And I'm going to hit play on this one. Great. So uh, the titles that I get back here are none that matched the last set of results. And importantly, the page info has changed too. So apparently there's still another set of results to be had here. And there is now a previous page. 
So the page information is telling me that there is both a page after this and a page before this. I'm not sure how many products I have in the store, so this will actually be a good test. Let's say I have 10 products in the store and I change the argument to first 10 and I just get the first page of results. Uh, looks like I have another page. If I were to bump this to something like 20 and I said first 20, actually let's just bump it all the way up to something like 50 and I hit play here. Now apparently there aren't actually 50 products in the store and so it's either 50 or less. So both has next page and has previous page are false. Now if you, I'm, I've been using first and after, but if you wanted to go in reverse order, there's a couple of different things you could do. You could say, I want the last elements from the list. And you could say, I want the last elements before some cursor. And you could also reverse the listing of these things so that instead of listing them in the order of created at ascending, you'd get them at created at descending. So you'd start with the, say, the product that uh, was created last. Pagination is also nested. So let's just go back to a smaller subset of results here. Just I'll call it like that. And I'm going to get rid of the pagination information at the top level of products here. So I'm going to get rid of cursor and page info. And let's say on products, I was also interested in their variance and their title. Oh, exactly. So variance returns a list. It's, well, it returns a connection type, which is a list of edges. For whatever reason, let's say naively, I only said I want the first two variants, but there's actually more than that. And I want the edges, and I open curly braces, and I want the node, and I want the ID of each variant and the title of each ID. And now I can use those same pagination fields at the level of variance. So next to edges, that was page info. And on the edge itself was a property called cursor. So if I do that, oh yes, I did mean to expand the information on page info for has next and has previous. Thanks error, very descriptive. <laughs> So now I've got some nested pagination going on here. So I can do pagination at every level of list that I have. And what this is saying is that um, I've requested the first two variants, but there is actually another page of variants for this product. And for this next product down here, classic varsity top, that also has a next page and so on and so forth. And I could use exactly the same principles per the schema to do things like after this particular Thanks for joining me for this discussion on pagination. In the final part of the GraphQL language features tutorial, we're going to be looking at a special argument that you can supply to any fields that returns connections called the query argument that is very useful and particular to Shopify schema.